In many cultures in the past, and some would continue the custom today, spouses were chosen by the parents of the children. In some cases, the children knew each other as playmates. In some, the perspectives meet only at the betrothal announcement. In this week's Parsha, Abraham sends his servant, presumably Eliezer of Damascus, to find a bride for his son Isaac. He is specifically sent to the family that Abraham had left behind. Abraham is not willing for Isaac to marry one of the local girls. In the Song of Songs, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, we read, You have ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. You have ravished my heart with one look of your eyes, with one link of your necklace. How fair is your love, my sister, my spouse. How much better than wine is your love, and the scent of your perfumes than all spices. We see that the bride is to be a close relative, like a sister. Eliezer sets a fleece before the Lord, saying, If such and such happens, then I will know that Jehovah has prospered my way. And indeed, these very things happen. Who will the bride be? A close relative, yet unknown. A young woman, a virgin who is willing to serve an unknown, yet not unheard of emissary, who carries with him a great deal of wealth. Ten camels, gold bracelets and earrings, clothing, and other special items which he gives as gifts. What about Rebecca? We see that she is given the choice to accept the proposal. What does she know? Certainly she has heard of this miracle child in her extended family. Certainly she can see that she will be marrying a man from a very wealthy family. Maybe there are extenuating circumstances which encourage her to leave her current living situation and proceed to a new life, even though she does not know what her new life will be like. Perhaps she is like the Shulamite in the Song of Songs, chapter 1, verse 6. Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. After Rebekah agrees to the arrangement, Eliezer is anxious to return to Canaan, and Rebekah consents to leave immediately. As they arrive towards her new home, she sees her future husband from afar. In Genesis 24:64, it delicately reads, And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. But the text actually uses the word for fell off the camel. I think she is hastening toward the marriage. From Genesis twenty four sixty seven, And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This is not a love story as the modern Western person considers it. We are taught to look for butterflies in our stomach, physical attraction, sleeplessness, euphoria, loss of appetite, racing heart. But, as the Bible teaches, love is not a feeling. It is a commitment a covenant, as it is written in 1 Corinthians thirteen four through 7 Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. What a pleasant prospect to come into such a relationship. When Rebecca arrives on the scene in the Genesis narrative, it is interesting to note that we have not seen Isaac since he went up the mountain with the father. You see, the sun goes up and does not reappear until the bride is ready. What about the other mystery brides in the Bible? What about Esther, niece to Mordechai, living exiled in Persia? Her parents are deceased so it is left to Mordechai to make a suitable match for her. Would it ever be likely that an orphan could become the queen? Would he espouse her to a non-Jew? And an apparent drunk besides? Of course, Yahweh has chosen her for such a time as this. And as it is written in Proverbs 21.1, The king's heart is in the hand of Jehovah, as the rivers of water. He turns it whithersoever he will. Also there is Ruth, an unlikely candidate, for the great-grandmother of King David and matriarch in the Messianic line. She is a Moabite of whom it is declared in Deuteronomy 23.3, An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of Jehovah. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of Jehovah forever. 
Again, she comes on the stage as an unknown quantity, although Boaz has heard of her credentials as an Ashit Chayil, a virtuous woman, or a woman of valor, as he calls her in Ruth 3.11. They are a good match, for he himself is an Ish Chayil, a man of valor, sometimes translated as a man of wealth. When Ruth left Moab with Naomi, she knew of no such person as Boaz and had no expectation of marriage or family. She knew she would be a foreigner with no rights at all. As she says to Boaz, having fallen on her face and bowed down to the ground, why have I found grace in your eyes that you should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a nochria, a stranger? To which he replies, it has fully been showed me all that you have done unto your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your nativity, and have come unto a people which you knew not heretofore. Here is an interesting correspondence. Just as a servant of Abraham remains unnamed in Genesis 24, so the person who identifies Ruth to Boaz is simply called the young man who is over the reapers. This is similar to the action of the Holy Spirit as described in John 16:13. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. What can we learn from all this about the mystery bride of Messiah? He will marry a close relative, and we are his brothers and sisters if we are born again. Matthew twelve fifty, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. In Romans eight twenty nine. For whom he did foreknow, he did also predestine to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. From Hebrews 2, verses 11 and 12, For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Even so, the bride is an unforeseen entity. From Colossians 1, 25 to 26, Even the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known, that is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Messiah in you, the hope of glory. We cannot judge by the externals, an orphan, a Moabite, to determine who the bride will be. We must know the internal mystery, Messiah who lives inside those who have received him. The bride appears to come from a faraway region. Song of Songs 8.5 Who is this that comes up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. She must also come with no expectation, because, as it is written in Isaiah 64.4 and repeated in 1 Corinthians 2.9, For since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared for him that waits for him. The bride must be prepared on many levels, in service, in faith, in beauty. Paul has written in Ephesians 5.27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, having not spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Consider the good works of Rebekah at the well, the Torah obedience of Ruth, and the preparations of Esther. And the bride must always be ready to leave and make any change needed on a moment's notice. The question is, are you prepared to leave your home and all that you know to be espoused to the one you have never met in person, the miracle child who went up the mountain and who is not returning until the bride is ready? Can you see the riches that are in Messiah? Have you seen his gifts? Are you ready to leave at a moment's notice, regardless of your circumstances here on earth? Do you know that he loves you with a covenantal love? Will you be the mystery bride?